First off, let me welcome you here. I think we were just catching up a couple minutes ago. This is probably your third, fourth, fifth time back here. Mm -hmm. um, interesting for me that you had a sense of what we were going to be able to do five, six years ago um, when we first had you here, um, and all we were focused on is Valpo. Right. But you seem to have a sense of what we were about to do and just have been one of the people that sort of got us and engaged with us right off the bat, been a partner of ours for a number of years, um, and now actively working a lot more together in Northwest Indiana. What is it about this place or this notion that, you know, uh, how do you connect with us so quickly? I thought it was great because it was, you focused on what's happening that's positive which unfortunately in the media nowadays, it seems like they focus more on what sells, you know, sex and violence and, and you guys are about what's positive in the region, not to, you know, and I knew about you because I, I you know, through the social media and even though you're Valpo centered, you, you talked about things that are a lot bigger than just Valparaiso and quite frankly, there's a lot of, you know, commonalities between what you do and what, what's going on in, in Lake County. What um, you're about to kick off, talk about what's going on in Lake County, you're about to kick off an awesome summer. Um, tell me if you're not from Hammond or you're not spending a lot of time in Hammond. And I said, you know, Mayor Tom, what's it like to spend a summer in Hammond? What's there to do? Right. Well, we focus on sports like a lot of the communities like Valparaiso. And I mean, baseball is a big part of any, you know, family's life. It seems like baseball or softball. And we have, we've rebuilt since I've been mayor, you know, 12 years now, I've rebuilt almost every baseball complex in the city, created them or rebuilt them. Uh, so it seems like between baseball and soccer, you know, travel baseball and travel soccer, uh, we're real busy in the summertime in Hammond, um, besides the fests and the, you know, weekly get-togethers we have. Um, tell me a little bit about your personal experience on the baseball side, helping your kids, you know, be involved with their teams, but also helping at the college level. Yeah, I, uh, this is the first year I coached. I'm a bench coach for Purdue Calumet. It's a voluntary position, uh, but it's great. We had... 40 games we were like 25 and 15 in that ballpark we had a really successful season we started off 7-0 and and it was exciting because last season purdue cali met in its first year of baseball only won five games so wow. we started off 7-0 and and then we got into the you know our, our conference and we, we played well we had a good season it's a good second season next year we're hoping to get better um, what was it like just being on the road with the team? I, I mean, actually it. doing all that stuff. Well, we had a bus trip to Florida. It took us 26 hours to get there. So if you can imagine me sitting in a bus for 26 hours <laughs> with a bunch, a bunch of, of college kids, with a bunch of college kids, but it was a great trip. And there's was, probably a pretty good amount of that that we couldn't put on video. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, it, it, the, the the kids are great. I love the thing. I was nervous is I've always coached little guys. Yeah, you know, 12, 13, 14. I'm coaching a 14 year old team this year, and I'm a really good coach with younger. So going into 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds was, I was nervous about the, the step, but I found out that I'm just as effective with those guys as I am with the young guys. I loved it. What did, what did dealing with those, that caliber level of player maybe teach you that you could pull back into the role of being a mayor, being mm -hmm. a dad, well, all the other things? My role on the team isn't, you know, it's obviously I know about baseball, I wouldn't have been picked, but my role is more like a role model. You know, I think the kids see me and they see that I'm super successful and I'm still athletic and I'm still, you know, work out as much as I do. And I'm the guy that picks them up when they're down. I'm the guy that knocks them down when they're too high up. Um, but I, I love being in the dugout. You know, I've been asked to coach bases before and I love being in the dugout because I'm all about their mental and trying to keep them grounded. And, you know, there's kids that get frustrated because they don't, they don't play. They, yeah. We had kids on our team that got one at bat this season. Wow. And you got to keep them motivated. And then the kid that's gotten a start every time, and then he gets knocked out of the starting lineup because he's struggling. I got to help that kid out as well. But being on the road and getting to know these kids. And the, the interesting thing was I had an election this year for mayor, and a lot of these kids live in Hammond because they live in the dorms. So I got a lot of these kids voting for me, which is nice. That's a nice it's double bonus. Up and your players could vote for you. So That's a pretty good thing. <laughs> Talk about Festival of the Lakes. Mm -hmm. um, coming up, gonna, you know, looks to be the biggest one yet. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a major decision that impacts sort of all of Indiana. And I think there's a lot of people that have been wanting to know, you know, Mayor Tom, you got a choice to make. Um, and beyond just Hammond, beyond just the Fe Festival of the Lakes audience, I think people want to know, are, are you looking more forward in 2000, this year, in this campaign, to 
um, Charlie Daniels Band or to Boston. <laughs> That's nice. I thought you were going someplace else with that. <laughs> um, I'm a Boston guy. I'm not. I, I although I'm looking forward to Boston a lot this year. I think it's going to be packed. Uh, there, I think they're our biggest act. Although there's you know some people out there that are more modern music that say getting two changes are most modern act, but. Yep. Uh, Boston is huge for us to land that, that band. Uh, they wanted to play Chicago proper, and we got them to play Hammond instead of Chicago. So uh, I think that's going to be huge. I, Charlie Daniels is the second time he's played in Hammond. He played during the August Fest when my father was mayor. But he is, Charlie Daniels' band is a, the type of band that's going to bring in a following. They're sort of like... Yeah. I'm looking forward to going. I mean, to both, actually, but uh, definitely to Charlie Daniels. And then, you know, on Wednesday we have... Uh, Hoobastank, P.O.D., and Alien Ant Farm, okay. uh, all three of them that night. Uh, on Saturday, I have two chains. On Sunday, we have Latin Night, and we're working on our act right now. We had a problem with our original act, but Latin Night's always huge. I, I, I predict over 100,000 people in the venue wow. this year. Yeah, at the, at the pavilion. I shouldn't call it the venue. The venue is the Horseshoe Casino, so... But the pavilion will have over 100,000 people at the concerts. What all is there to do outside of just the concerts? Well, we have, it's a five-day festival. Uh, so we do it the same way every year. Uh, we have a golf outing on Friday, um, a Friday afternoon at the Last Marsh. Saturday, we have uh, the 5K run in the morning. We have a fishing derby Saturday. Also a special, uh, special needs day uh, Saturday as well. Uh, Sunday, we have the Polka Mania, I call it. It's the Polka Fest. It's at the marina. They also have a car show at the main fest ground on Sunday. Uh, so there's always something going on besides the, you know, you got the midway with the rides and you got the food court and, you know, tons of vendors. And then the big draw every night is the show. And the show is, we're predicting huge crowds. Uh, Wednesday will be big with the young crowd. Saturday is going to be big. It's like big night. I'm, I think Saturday is going to be our biggest night. And then Latin night never ceases to amaze me. With Latin night, it's probably our most profitable night. Well, the, uh, I would like to see a lot of residents of Valpo and Porter County come out and try the festival. I, and I know a lot do, by the way. It seems like every year we're getting more and more. And in fact, I think we have billboards that are going to be advertising out here this year. So we're increasing our footprint for advertising as well. But, you know, we have great bands this year. I, I know there's a lot of Boston fans over here in Porter County. I know there's a lot of Charlie Daniels fans. I know there's a lot of P.O.D., Hoobastank, and Alien Ant Farm fans. You know, there might be even a lot of 2 Chains fans out here. But... It's a great fest. It costs twenty-five dollars to park your car. You could have ten people in the car. Twenty-five bucks, and you could all walk in and for free. And we're doing a couple different things this year too. Uh, we're making the entire pavilion a beer garden. So once you go in, if you show your ID, you get a bracelet, and you can walk around with your drink. Uh, previously, we always had a beer garden okay. with fences around it. Got rid of them. Yeah. So it's going to be more like a venue, a concert venue that you could walk around with your drink. And of course, if a, uh, somebody younger than 21 is trying to drink, we'll see it because they won't have a, a wristband on. Yeah. So we're getting that approved through exercise as we speak. It's gonna be a great time. Expanding it, but still keeping it all under control. Yes, sir. It's uh, mid-July when that happens. So it's uh, July 16th, something like that, July 16th through 19th or something along those lines. Do you ever, when those guys get into town, just say, you know what, just let me up on stage for one song? No, you know what, I mean, I've been up on stage uh, I'm not singing. They had me, uh, Big and Rich last year's country act were amazing. They were great people. I'm not even a country fan, but they were amazing. They played ACDC, they played everything, but they brought me up on stage for one of their songs and sat me at a bar and I got to drink a beer while they were right up on stage. It was yeah. pretty cool. But and you gotta be thinking, this is what all that work back in Notre Dame Law School yeah, right. was for. But no, I've never, like there's that. some bands I could sing with. Like I, I, would, I know Boston songs, but I yeah. would never want to ask them that. If they pull me out there, that's the one thing, but. I'm always ready, you know, yeah. I'm like testing my throat backstage just in case, you know. But it's just got to be fun to be out there and bringing all it those is. people into the city and seeing them have a good time. How about this? Last year, Sublime is one of my favorite bands of all time, all right? And I got to bring them to Hammond last year, and they had to be 20,000 people that day. And I sat up on stage just like, this is a pretty cool party we throw in Hammond. I mean, literally, there's 20,000 people all chanting and ready for Sublime to start, and that was a cool day. I, I took a picture with my family before. It was amazing. I've never seen that many people in the festival grounds. It was so packed. There's something about the diversity of bands that probably connects pretty well mm -hmm. into the diversity of the city. It does. Um, to tell you got just about every resident, mm -hmm. you know, community populace within the city, and you got to help sort of bring all those people together, not just for a festival, but an ongoing basis. So, how do you stay? We see a lot at Mayor's Night Outs, mm -hmm. um, and 
you know, fundraisers um, for a lot of the local community organizations, doing stuff out of the parks and with the kids. How do you stay as connected to those people as you are? Well, I live there. I mean, obviously, and, and be, by living there, I'm part of the community. You know, I participate in community events. I go to meetings regularly. I'm very, as a mayor, and I'm sure most mayors are, but I think it's not very often I miss things. You know, I look at my job more as my job is busier at nighttime, you know, after dinner than yeah. it is before breakfast. You know, I don't really see myself needing to be at the office at 8 a.m. in the morning because I think it's more important that I'm out at 8 p.m. Yep. talking to people. And so I, that was something that took me a while as mayor to realize that, because when I first became elected, I'd walk into work at 7.30 and people would look at me like, I've never seen a mayor walk in at 7.30, mayor, and I'm like, well, I'm a different kind of mayor. This is what I do. Yeah. And then I'm working 7.30 a.m. until 9 o'clock at night. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> I can, I can adjust to my calendar a little bit. So I started getting to work later, and I work out in the morning. And then, although you can't tell, but, uh, and then I work later at night, so. That's my philosophy. So I guess to answer your question, I stay grounded because you know I, I participate after work, you know, after business hours and community events regularly. And the Hammond people seem pretty eager to actually share their opinions, vent their concerns, voice their f support. You know, they're not a timid crowd. So no. when you get out there with them, <laughs> you know, they're they're, and maybe that leads to the next question is, you know, Hammond and yourself have a very similar culture. Mm -hmm. um, and we were talking earlier about how mayors either accentuate the culture, help set the culture, um, you know, add to it, change to it over time. Hammond's is probably pretty um, symbiotic with you. Yeah, I think so. A tougher crowd, mm -hmm. um, you know, definitely a scrappier city. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of pride of being Hammond. Hardworking. Um, yeah, very hardworking, mm -hmm. very just, you know. It's Hammond residents, allow me to be myself, which for me is great. And, you know, we were talking before we got in here about, if, let's say if I was mayor of another city, maybe like a city like Chesterton, there's no yeah. mayor there, so let's just say yeah. Chesterton, right? If I was the mayor of Chesterton, I'd probably have to adjust my behavior, and I couldn't be as rough around the edges as I am as the mayor of Hammond. And I think that's a very true statement that you brought up to me, that, and it's nice for me to be the mayor of Hammond because I don't have to there's no fake pretense about me. I'm, I am myself. And I'm, the people at Hammond want you to be just do. like you are. They do. They yeah. like They it. like the glove. They do. Yeah. Because, you know, Hammond needs a fighter. And, you know, before I took over, there was a lot of concern and, and focus on, you know, we need to rebuild Gary. And I'm not saying we don't need to rebuild Gary, but there's, you know, a lot of rebuilding needs to happen in my city and East Chicago and Whiting. And, and people need to fight for those dollars that are available. And I think Hammond residents trust me to, to go to, Go to go to war for them. Yeah, and I do. You know, we talked a couple about a couple of mentors along the way mm -hmm. that have helped um, inspire you. Um, you know, one in Notre Dame. You know, mm -hmm. prior to getting in, and then once um, mm -hmm. you were in. Tell me about those two individuals and how they literally changed your life. Well, I was talking about Bob Welsh. The the I think he, I don't believe he owns Welsh Co anymore. A Welsh Mart, yeah, but I think it's Welsh how and, uh, he changed my life, and I know he's a Porter County person, so hopefully he sees this video, but he helped get me into law school at Notre Dame. I needed help, because my scores weren't where they needed to be to get it automatic acceptance. I was waitlisted, and you know, when you have a hall named after you at Notre Dame, you have a little bit more pull than <laughs> Tom McDermott Jr. does, and he met with me, knew my family, gave a good word to me, and changed my life. I met my wife after that, you know, I mean, I literally met Marissa and then had a family because of a decision that he made. He could have ignored me. And, you know, it's just neat how little acts of kindness by people can change their life. And I continue to remember people like him. And, you know, I mean, he's still around. And every time I see him, I tell him how thankful I am. But it's, that's Did a good shot. Oh, my gosh. You know, I mean, he changed my life. I mean, you know. You I, get to Notre Dame mm -hmm. and there's another guy that jumped in right off the bat. Yeah, Dean Link. He was the dean of the law school at the time. So he pulls me into his office when I first become a student there and tells me, you know, you're in the big leagues here, McDermott, and we don't think you're going to make it. <laughs> Literally tells me, you know. And you're prior, prior already, probably already thinking, uh, oh my God, I'm I was scared to Holy crap, I know, what's I was, happening? I was Golden Dome and I'm surrounded by all these, there was an NFL player in our class, there was a Hollywood actor in our class. So I'm impressed already. And they're like, McDermott, you got to go to the dean's office. I'm like, really? It's like the first day of school. So I go there. And I didn't even do anything wrong yet. He sits me down for a half hour and tells me how much he thinks I'm going to fail out of Notre Dame Law School. 
<laughs> so, so I have, and by the way, it costs $25,000 a year, and I'm taking student loans out to go to this school, and I'm like, great, I'm wasting all this money, I'm going to fail out of this school. So how much are you panics, and how much are you sort of doubles down oh, I in doubled determination? Down. Oh, I was scared to death the whole time I was in law school. People ask me, you know, what was law school like? I said, I was petrified for the first two years. Yeah. Third year, I started feeling like I belonged there. The first two years, I was scared to death all the time. Every time a grade would come out, I was petrified. Because... I'm going to school with a bunch of geniuses. Somebody's got to get an F. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm the guy that's going to get an F the way I looked at it. I didn't, thankfully. I did actually fairly well. I had over 3-0, which is great at Notre Dame. I wasn't top of the class, you know. You, you talked a little bit about he gave you that early lesson, and then mm -hmm. he's gone on to sort of yeah. live his life in a, in a very giving-oriented way. Where that's is he now? Great story. In fact, I, maybe you could reach out to him. Uh, so Dean Link at the time... Uh, was a deacon in the Catholic Church and his wife passed away and he became a priest and left Notre Dame. We had a new dean take over and then about 20 years later I'm at a Notre Dame football game. I'm at a tailgate with a bunch of alumni and I see this guy as a father and I said that's Dean Link and I haven't seen this guy since the day he sat me down in his office and told me that I was gonna wow. fail out basically and I got to sit down with him. I bought his book. He was selling a book and I found out he's a, a, a priest at the Michigan City Jail and he's been there for years. We're only 45 minutes away from each other. And basically, I got to tell him that he changed my life. And I'm a mayor now. And he found out I was the mayor of Hammond. And I, I could tell he was really affected. He was, like, tearing up a little bit. But we took a picture and put it on Facebook. And yeah. had a zillion hits. It was, that was one of my more popular posts because it was just such a cool story. You're, that's a perfect segue into you're a may, uh, mayor that is definitely not afraid to communicate in all means. You got your show on WGLB. You communicate actively via letters to the editor and mm -hmm. to the papers. Um, you come here and talk to us a bunch. You're out at the mayor's nights. You're, mm -hmm. you're just, you're engaging with people a lot. Mm -hmm. You communicate a load on social media. Mm -hmm. um, that brings with it plenty of you know, from my standpoint, entertainment, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, also good news and information, but um, it's got to bring some headaches associated with it. Mm -hmm. um, why do you do it? Why do you communicate in so many means? Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a communicator, and I'm a person that's been entrusted to run a city with a $75 million budget and 650 employees, and people want to know, and, and people don't trust government anyway. And, you know, I'm a Democrat from Lake County. People are looking for reasons to hate on people like me. And I don't, I'm a good, honest person. I'm doing this for all the right reasons. So I have nothing to hide. So why not just tell people, you know, I go out and give speeches. I never prepare my speech. Like coming here today, I didn't like go over like a checklist of stuff I wanted to talk about. I just talk. Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's nice because if, I guess if I were lying all the time, I'd just have to keep track of everything I'm saying. I just tell people how I feel and it works. And the funny thing is, it's gotten me where I am today, which I guess I'm doing all right. I've been, I'm going to be the longest serving mayor in Hammond's history, but there's people talking about me running for other offices. And the fir first thing people want to do is, hey, you know, if you run for this, you're going to have to change the way you yeah. post on social media. You're not going to yeah. be able to be as blunt. And I'm yeah. like, it got me where I am. Why would I change? You know, like, I think people want to see people like me in office. Like Chris Christie, before the, the whole thing about the bridge. Yeah. Governor Christie was a popular guy. Why? Because he's blunt and honest and he tells people what he thinks. Yeah. You know? I love my job and, and the person that's going to be successful as a mayor. You could be a council person and get away with things, but as mayor, you're, everybody knows who the mayor is. You know, everybody knows. I get blamed for stuff that's not within my jurisdiction. I get credit for stuff that's not within my jurisdiction. People just assume the mayor runs everything. Yeah. Like the schools, for instance. They think the mayor is, you know, well, my kid got suspended. You know, thanks a lot, mayor. Like, I have nothing to do with that. You know, your kid got yeah. suspended because your kid did something wrong. I mean, I don't run the school. And the other but... kid gets a scholarship and they're saying, thanks right. a lot, mayor. Right. Well, I actually don't I help or hurt. Yeah. To... You know, I, you know, I call it the Luke Skywalker effect. You know, it's like, you know, you're using the force. Yeah. And people give me credit for stuff that I have nothing to do with, but I get blamed for a lot of stuff I have nothing to do with also. When you talk about those regional personalities, what mayors stand out as, you know what, that mayor in this city is just like, what a match. It just uh, seems like it's a fit. Well, we were talking before. I think Dave Uran in Crown Point is a perfect example of what a Crown Point person is. He's athletic. He's young. He's, uh, he's not really a liberal Democrat, but he's not a Republican either. He's right in the middle, sort of, on a lot of issues. He's all about athletics and family and, 
And the funny thing is... That's where they're putting their money in schools right. and the ball fields right. and the downtown. I mean, he like, and, why is he successful? Why did he get elected to do a third term? Because he exemplifies his city. Yeah. Mayor Snedekorn also, and Mayor Joe and Whitey. And it's funny. The people you see that are successful long-term mayors have been around a while. It's because they represent their city well. Yeah. You know, you know, Mayor Costa is here in Valpo. He represents Valpo well, obviously, because he's been elected to a fourth term also. You know, and that's the thing. Like, if Mayor Costa didn't ex exemplify Valparaiso as well as he does, he would not be around for over 12 years as mayor. And so if you are, you know, a good example as a mayor, you're going to be around for a while. But if you ignore parts of your community or if, you know, you're not going to be as successful. Um, there's always discussion, getting back to the little joking question a little while ago about um, the uh, which band you prefer. <laughs> there's always questions about, you know, um, now versus later, you know, what, what's Mayor Tom's plan for the mm -hmm. long run? Um, what do you want to tell Northwest Indiana about your focus right now? Well, right now, I mean, I just got reelected to it. Well, I have to an opponent in November, but by all indications, I just got reelected to a fourth term which has never happened in Hammond before, so that's an honor. Um, it's an old city, 130-year-old city, so it's an honor to be that person. You know, I, one day I do anticipate I'm going to make a run at higher office. I just don't know when that day is, you know. 2016 has a lot of opportunities, but, you know, I'm only 46 years old, so I, I'm hopeful that there's more opportunities down the road for me as well. Um, Last thing I'll touch on is um, when you talk about, let's say you're at a mayor's conference down in Indy or you're out someplace, you know, outside of the state and someone just says, hey, who are you? You know, um, oh, I'm Mayor Tom uh, mm -hmm. McDermott um, out of Hammond. Somebody says, tell me about Hammond. So what, what's Hammond all about? If I didn't know sure. anything about Hammond, we were just sitting at a bar. What's Hammond all about? It's a suburb of Chicago. It's a scrappy city of hardworking people, blue collar mostly, you know. Uh, people that own their homes and they maintain their homes well and they're proud of their homes, you know. It's a city that's got challenges, you know. Like America, we have poverty in Hammond. We have school system that's struggling. We have, you know, we have, you know, police issues. You know, police are working hard to try to maintain safety and they're doing a great job. But a lot of the same issues we feel across our country with the racial tensions, we're feeling them in Hammond. But it's a great city and it's a proud city and it's a city that's 130 years old and it's rebuilding. You know, we're literally rebuilding our city from ground up. And, you know, I'm looking forward to another 130 years in Hammond. I'm, Hammond's a strong city and well positioned for the future, it, mostly because of our access to Lake Michigan water. We have, Hammond has a bright future. Um, I'll actually extend it a little bit. Economic development wise, you've chosen to really think outside the box mm -hmm. in terms of, hey, what's going to generate revenue long term? There's casino revenue, obviously, there's industrial revenue. Um, you know, there's a rebuilding commercial market, but you've also said, we got to find a better way. Mm -hmm. you got programs like the College Bond Program that need to get funded long term. Um, tell us a little bit about water. Yeah. You've, you've seen both the need and the ability to turn that into, um, you know, no pun intended, a lifesaver mm -hmm. for some of those city programs. Um, water revenue, we approached Water Sales to Illinois differently this last term. I had my third term. And we had some contracts expiring with Chicago Heights and Cal City, where we had, Hammond, 30 years ago, decided to give water at a, basically a fixed rate for 30 years, and it was basically giving the water away. And when the contracts expired, of course, Cal City and Chicago Heights wanted to renew the contracts and you know come to another fixed price. And what we decided to do is approach it differently. And we charge more of a market rate for water, which is very high, and it's set by the Chicago Water Company, Mayor Emanuel. And we pegged ourselves to about 12 to 15% cheaper than what he's offering water for. And what that did was, you know, first off we got sued in federal court by Chicago Heights and the constitutionality and the, the legality of what we were doing was questioned and you know, we got through that and ended up reaching a long-term deal with them, 20 years with Chicago Heights and with Cal City at significantly increased rates. And we're the only city in Northwest Indiana that could sell water in Illinois because <clears throat> of the contracts we have going all the way down to Dyer, which gives Hammond a great, you know, great future. Water is the future and Hammond is well positioned to sell water.